already in Italy, we've got a zero waste research center in uh, um, Capanari in Tuscany and another one in Trapani in Sicily. Now these are not grandiose uh, operations, they're not big institutes, they're little rooms somewhere where people in examine the residual fraction. Well, one of the first things they did in Capanari was to look at the residuals and they found that the most frequent item in the residual fraction, the second most frequent, was diapers disposable diapers, panolini. And so one of the things they encouraged was a local business to make reusable panolini. So you could say the production of panolini went down with the, the multinationals like Johnson & Johnson are making disposable panolini. But there's this new industry that's grown up in, in um, Capanari, which is making reusable panolini. And, and the local community is helping the local pharmacies and supermarkets are actually giving the first reusable panolini to new parents. It's free for, for new parents. So that's one example. Another example is that when they looked at the residuals, they found hundreds of these plastic coffee capsules, lavasa, for making coffee, you know, one serving. You put the little plastic thing with coffee and you get one cup of real coffee. Very popular. George Clooney advertises it. I think my favorite, what's her name? Um, oh dear, she was in Erin Brockovich. Um, Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. She also, I think. Anyway, they are developing alternatives now, not just Lavasa, but other companies. So you can get a plastic, permanent plastic shape, which you fill with your own coffee. Same shape. It goes into the same machine. And uh, it does more or less the same thing, except the one piece of co co uh, plastic goes round and round and round and round. So these are the kind of things that we, we can do. And uh, one of the other things I felt with the, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, what we need from the research centers is a, uh, researching best practices around the world. So every community can avail themselves of the advances that are making elsewhere. By the way, this is why I like what you're doing with this video, because I think one of the, the props for zero waste is good communication. So when we're making advances, when, they're make, when we're making positive changes, we need to capture it on video, then share it with, on YouTube to the rest of the world. That way, anybody knows that when they make an advance, they're not just doing it for their, their own village or their own town or even their own country. They're doing it for the whole world. If it's really good, if it's really good. So this is our friend, these, this little tech that we, technology that we have now, both the internet and, and these um, devices. Great, I think it's amazing that you do this on a, a cell phone. What do you call a smartphone? Okay, thanks. What can people in Eastern Europe or Romania contribute to the zero waste movement? Uh, the best thing they can contribute is not to copy the bad mistakes of Western Europe, of focusing too much on magic machines, on, on particularly on incinerators, pyrolysis, or gasification, all the other magic machines that are offering, and to instead to recognize that waste is a low-tech problem, it's a social problem, and it's going to be solved with better organization, better education, and better industrial design. As I say, you're starting more or less from scratch after the liberation from some pretty rotten dictator, if I remember. Um, you know, you've been liberated, and part of that liberation is to, is to set a better example for the world and get young people involved. We need more and more young people um, getting involved with zero waste because this is the way of getting them involved with sustainability and moving towards a sustainable society is going to be the biggest challenge we've ever given a generation. I mean, it's the biggest challenge since the Industrial Revolution. We've got, we've got everything except sustainability. And it's going to be tough. It's going to be really, really tough. And that's why we need young people getting in early. And one of the things I would do, and this is maybe in Romania is where you really go to town, is for biology teachers to teach composting in their biology classes, or rather to use the compost pile 
as a demonstration of an ecosystem. It's a wonderful ecosystem. And the students can do various experiments with the compost pile, like seeing if biodegradable plastics are really biodegradable. The other thing that the, the, the school could do is to have evening classes where you teach students to become master composters. We have master composters in America, particularly in Seattle. There's a group called Seattle Tilth, which, which puts out dozens of these master composters who go are available to teach anybody in Seattle all the different ways you can compost in your backyard and help them. Now, if the students could do the same thing at 12, 13, 14, and can go and knock on doors in the community and say, oh, look, the community is providing these cheap or subsidized composting kits. If you'd like to get one of these, I will help you. I will troubleshoot any problems, so don't feel that you're going to be uh, out on a limb with this thing. Now, in addition to everything else, of course that would be a very practical contribution, but in addition to everything else, that's introducing that child at 12, 13 or 14 to community service. A community service with one eye on sustainability. And not all those children is going to change their lives, but some of them it will. And from there, they will move and grow in other ways when they go to university, getting more and more skills, more and more knowledge to contribute to this, to the shift. There's going to be a great shift mm -hmm. in, in a, a paradigm shift, we say. And the paradigm shift, I think, will have to be changing from our preoccupation with standard of living to a preoccupation with quality of life because you, you can't separate a standard of living very easily from material consumption, but you can separate quality of life from material consumption. And that's why we need everybody involved with this zero waste movement. We don't want just zero waste experts, waste experts. We want playwrights, poets, musicians, composers. We have to change people's minds. So we want the people that are good at that. We want the the creative people, the creative writers, and in addition we need the philosophers, I mean these psychologists, to know us how to do it. We need the advertisers, but advertisers for good things, not for consumption, but for happiness. We need advertising for cheap ways. Of, and there are, there are people that are so sickened by, by selling soap suds and other crap to people that they have broken away from the advertising industry and used their techniques against them. I'm thinking of ad busters out of Vancouver, British Columbia. They have a magazine called Adbusters. And there they, they, they go after products like vodka and McDonald's and uh, a few other things, and cigarettes and so on, and, to, and use their techniques against the product, not, for, not to sell the product, but to desell the product. Fascinating, fascinating. Thanks a lot. Where will your next uh, travel destination be? Oh, or what, what are your next projects? Okay, I go to um, when I get. I'm going to London, see some family, and then to uh, before I get home in America, I'm flying down to Dallas, Texas, very quickly to give a three-minute testimony on why Dallas should stop fluoridating its drinking water. It's going to cost somebody a thousand dollars to get me to talk for three minutes in front of Dallas City Council as to why they should stop fluoridating the water. You don't do it in Romania, thank goodness, and don't let them ever tell you to do it. After that, I get a short break, and then I'm off to uh, Ontario. Thanks a lot. Okay. <laughs> you, want to you want to tell us a little bit about your new book? Oh, yes, yes. For those who want... It's very difficult to talk, say everything, although I try to say everything, rather like Gustav Mahler in one of his symphonies. Um, it's very difficult to say everything, but I have put down everything I know about this subject after 28 years in one book. It's called The Zero Waste Solution, Untrashing the Planet One Community at a Time. And I'm thrilled that Jeremy Irons, who's the host of Trashed, who, in which I appear, very kindly agreed to write the foreword, which is big for me. No one's heard of me in the United States, but they have heard of Jeremy Irons. So seeing that Jeremy Irons done this, very useful. So this Zero Waste Solution book, which is 
a translation of a book that I worked with and um, Rossano Ercolini from Italy and Patricia Lasciotto. Uh, called, that book was called Zero Waste, a Revolution in Progress. It's somewhat thin, but this book is expanded um, and I've had the help of peop more people and lots and lots of photographs illustrating everything. The first part of the book talks about the philosophy of zero waste, the 10 steps, the arguments against incineration, which is the big obstacle to zero waste, the history of, of incineration battles, the history of zero waste, and then the second part of the book is case studies from around the world of zero waste, um, Italy and so on, California. And the third part of the book is uh, 10 essays from activists, theoreticians, practitioners on zero waste. So a fairly comprehensive book. The Zero Waste Solution. Sounds great. Hopefully we'll have it in Romanian. We will have day. it in Romanian, mm -hmm. yes. Good. We will. Um, what would be the message, your message, to and for the Zero Waste Romania? Well, what is my message? I, I, I'm always tempted to give the... the I, if I go back to my first talk on, zero, on waste incineration, I think it was a very early talk. I know I can find the old transparency. I ended up with three messages. Three messages. The first message is to citizens. Don't let the experts take your common sense away. The experts will try to make waste complicated. The more complicated you make waste, the more likely you're going to be seduced into building a great big complicated German machine to solve it. So don't let the experts take your common sense away. The 10 steps of zero waste, anybody could work out. It's pretty darn obvious. Separate, once you've separated, specific processes for specific materials, etc., etc., etc. The second message is to politicians. Stop running to high-paid consultants and magic machines to solve your problems. Put your faith back in people. Put your faith back into the citizens who voted for you. Unless it was a complete trick, you must have had some confidence in them to want them to vote for you. They have voted for you, now trust them. Lay on the systems, they won't let you down. If those systems are uh, good, they take us towards sustainability. If you can communicate to them that this is good for their children, their grandchildren, for their community, for their economy, they're going to do it. So put your faith back in them. And the third uh, message is to activists. Have fun. You've got to enjoy whatever campaigns you're working on. It doesn't matter how grim the, the, the object is. I mean, some, some things that we're fighting are very, very grim. Um, nuclear power and genetic engineering, fracking, the fluoridation. These are horrible things that some, pers some people make money out of. But however grim they are, you've got to enjoy the battle. You want them to be miserable. The people that are doing these things, you want them to be miserable. You want to be cheerful. You want to be happy. And the way you are happy is that the, you're working with people that are decent people. You, you're going to like the people that you work with because they're not doing it to make a lot of money. Nobody in your group is going to make a lot of money. None of you is going to get or maybe one or two might get to uh, political office, but that won't be the, the motivation. So celebrate the fact that um, this, the future of our planet is, is hinge between what is in the interests of multinational corporations. That means a few very, very, very rich people and the interests of communities. And uh, the communities are more likely to come up with solutions which are compatible with the planet's demands than multinationals. The multinationals have a looting mentality. They want to consume the planet as fast as they possibly can to make as much money for their shareholders as quickly as they can. The, the grassroots activists, on the other hand, want to spend the planet as slowly as possible so we can share it further and further into the future with our children and great-grandchildren and, and so on. And so aligning yourself with the grassroots movement around the, the planet is, is a fun thing to do. We're on the right side of history.